Court comes in and he, um, you know, um, speaks, speaks to Job. Praise God, praise God. So I just made a few, a few notes, just made a few notes here. So, yeah. So the Lord is coming in now. He, com he comes out of a whirlwind um, to confront Job and his three friends now um, because last week, as you know, we uh, filed a listening to, to God. He, he wanted a writ of particulars and he made um, an oath of clearance as well to um, defend his righteousness. So God is, comes in now out of the world when he makes an appearance out of the world wind and you know if you remember in um verse 35 of chapter 31 where job had demanded let the almighty answer me and um yahweh's appearance now god's appearance now before job and his friends it seems as if you know he has accepted um um job's you know, um, demand for litigation. And if we look in verse 1 of chapter 38, we're going to be looking at chapter 38 and 39 tonight. If we look at um, chapter 38, verse 1 of Job, where it, um, the Lord says, let's find it here. Um, then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, verse 2, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Now, to Job and his friends, it seems that finally, Job is happy, finally the Lord, you know, is putting an appearance. But in contrast to Job's expectations, God does not acquit him, but confronts him with the ignorance of him, that is God. The ignorance of God's universal governance of the world. And this is what he says in verse 2. Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Now Job has frequently given his opinions of how the world should be governed. And now he is confronted by his ignorance. made by God. So... God tells him to gird up his loins, to prepare himself like a man because he's going to be questioned. Now, God is going to expose Job's impotence and his creatureliness, if you like, in comparison to God's infinite greatness. No one is God's equal. No one can usurp his role. And, uh, you know, Job made a bold attempt to subpoena him and to bring this lawsuit to um, um, exclaim himself, his righteousness against God, and it is just completely, co completely unacceptable. So Yahweh, in his first two speeches, he makes two speeches, and in the first speech, chapter 38, he asked Job a series of questions that by no stretch of the imagination is Job able to answer. And these questions make Job's um, appeal to make the process of litigation totally redundant. And the friends too, they've been asking the wrong questions because they have persisted in appraising Job's situation solely through the static mode of just desserts, you reap what you sow. And basically, what is a more fundamental concern is the nature of divine justice. Job has been railing uh, uh, against God for most of the book that God is unjust because he sees himself as a just person and the way he's been treated means that God is unjust. From, from God's viewpoint, the real question is not about his universal governance of the world, but precisely more about who he is and can he be trusted with what he is doing in the world. And it's as if Job is saying, you know, he's, God is unjust, 
So it's as if he's saying, well, you know, can he, can he, you know, uh, can he be trusted with what he's doing in the world if he's treating me a righteous person in this way? So, um, you know, Job is, is, is bringing these arguments and, you know, God is coming now. He's listening, you know, God is listening, obviously. And he's coming <laughs> now and he's going to put Job to the test. So, okay. Job is, um, um, excuse me, um, Sister Red. Is Job um, asking God the question now? No. Job is asking God's question now. Is it? No. Job is not asking any questions now. He's, he's spoken, he's finished his speeches, and he said what he wanted to say in chapter 31. So God is coming now, yeah, and he's going to, he's talking to Job now. He's talking to Job. Job will answer, but not yet. God is talking to him now in verse, in chapter 38, 38, 39. Mm-hmm. God this is his God. This is God's time. He's listened to the whole story about what God, uh, Job has been saying about his demands and um, his appeal through litigation. And he's done his, his, his clear oath of clearance. He's done everything he can to get a response from God. And God has not responded. Well, now God is going to respond. And this is what he's, he's saying to Job. So Yahweh makes two speeches. God makes two speeches and he gives him, he assails him. You know, he fires at him a round of questions and um, in no way is he able to answer these questions. So God begins this questioning of Job as to where he was when he himself, God, made the world. When he laid its eternal cornerstone and foundation, while the stars and the angels sang his praises, who is it, he asks Job, that closes the seas with garments of clouds and restrain them within boundaries they dare not cross? If Job cannot answer these questions adequately, how can he contend that he has sufficient understanding to call God to account regarding his personal circumstances. God commands the day and the night to know their place, to continue their work of eternal regularity. If you're reading uh, chapter 38, I'm just sort of going through it as God is um, as God is um, speaking to, to, to Job. Job. Job asking Christian. So God asking Christian. God says to says to him in uh, verse 12 and 38. Um, the day and the night, I command the day and the night to know their place, to continue their work of eternal regularity of the dawn. Sunrise seizes the earth and shakes the wicked from their hiding places. The wicked abhors the light as it restrains them from deeds of violence. And here, if you think about um, night and day, dark and uh, light, darkness and light, and this is an archetype of the righteous and the wicked in the structure of the universe. God's creative pattern includes a moral order in which there is no place for the sinful or the depraved. And you have here, with the arrival of the door, the wicked are exposed and their strength is broken by the goodness of light. So um, Yahweh's question to Job then refutes his earlier lamentable curse, you know, in, in verse 3, uh, chapter 3, 3 to 10, you know, where he, he bemoans his death and the fact that he's going to be born, you know, you know and um, God is saying, well, how can you say something like that? Because you have got no control, you're just a man, you know, so he, you know, he brings him to task over it. He continues to question Job, saying, have you journeyed to the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been shown to you? Have you seen the gates of the shadows of death? In fact, does Job have any idea how vast the world is? Does he realize the extent of what he doesn't know? It is quite clear that Job knows nothing of what he's been asked. And the Lord says, surely you know, Job. 
about the source of light and darkness, for you were already born. God assigns places to light and darkness and has sovereign control over the dark underworld. Job has been accused of arrogance in thinking that he knows how God works. He has been made aware of the greatness and otherness of God. Instead of arguing against God, Job must let God be God and accept his own creaturely rank. God acts wisely in creating the rain clouds to quench arid and thirsty lands for plant life and vegetation and to provide the desert oasis where no man lives. Does Job know the laws that govern the constellations? Did he establish them? Can he command the clouds to do his wishes? Can he order lightning to do his bidding? The planetary universe is under God's control. Job would never be able to grasp or understand its intricacy. God is master of the wild animals. What does Job know about these creatures? The lion, raven, goat, donkey, ox, ostrich, horse, the eagle, the hawk. Did he make them? Can he feed what, them? One verse, sorry, I just said that. We're in chapter 38, all of the verses. Verse 38. Chapter 38, chapter 38. Mm-hmm. We're in chapter 38. And okay. what verse do we reach there now? Chapter 39 to 40, where God protects the vulnerable mountain goat. That's 39 one, actually. He provides food for the mighty lion. 38, verse uh, 39 to 40. And the weak raven, 38, verse 41. Only he can tame the wild donkeys and wild oxen. The donkeys scorn any form of authority by human beings. They roam the wastelands, feeding where they can, living wild and free as their creator attended, intended them to be. Chapter 39, verse 5 to 8. Likewise, the wild ox cannot be harnessed to serve man as its domesticated counterpart does. It will not be tamed into submission to be relied upon because of its great strength. The ostrich is not only a flightless bird, it is without wisdom. It is a foolish creature by human standards. This, however, is my prerogative, says God. His creation, my creation are mine, not man's. The tendency of looking at everything in human terms limits the realm of my activities. And this is what Job has been doing. The ostrich is foolish to the man, to humanity, but is a law unto itself and can outrun a horse and rider when the need arises. And if you think of the ostrich, you can you can um, see this. I don't know how much you know about ostriches, but um, they're very um, strange birds because, you know, they the, the female will lay an egg and then she'll just leave it. And then the, the male will, will stay with it until it hatches. And then it just goes off. The female lays it and then she just goes off. You know, she doesn't care whether it gets trampled on or anything. She just leaves it. And then the male, when it hatches, he just leaves as well. So, you know, once the, the, they hatch, they just have to fend for themselves. You know, so in a way, they're not very good parents. And, you know, um, we think of the ostrich as, as a foolish creature. And God says, by our standards, it is a foolish creature and it's his prerogative to make an ostrich a foolish creature because his creations are his and not ours. And um, the ostrich is the law unto itself as well because when danger comes, it can outrun a horse and rider, you know. So um, there is some, um, it has um, some intellectual um senses so to speak about it it is not just an animal a creature that is just there but you know it has mm. got some some um divine qualities about it and it's up to god how he makes his animals you know what he does um he makes some that seems simple and he makes some that seems very very clever 
and now um, God speaks about um, the horse as well. Did Job endow the horse with its striking attributes of strength, beauty, and fearlessness? The scent of battle invigorates and enhances the wildness of the horse. It laughs at fear, it is afraid of nothing, and does not shy away from the sword of war. Because when you think of horses, they tend to be, you know, used mostly in war. You know, and they tend to be war horses, and they're trained, and they're not afraid, um, they don't shy away from the sword. You know, they, they can be, um, their attributes of strength, they are fearless when it comes to battle. And you see this in verses 19 to 25 of chapter 31. Now the vulture and the hawk. Chapter 31. Chapter 31. Chapter 31. Chapter 39, verses 19 to 5, is what I just talked about with the horse. 39. Um, 39 from verse 19 to 25. Okay. Yes. Okay, so um, I'll go on now um, to 26 to 30. It's, this is not in um, chronological order as I'm speaking. So 39, chapter 39, verses 26 to 30. I'm speaking of where um, God says the eagle and the hawk are essential birds of prey. They follow my rules, which are set up to cater for their nature and their needs, clearing up after human battles and feeding on the wounded to help prevent the spread of disease. Is it Job's wisdom that does this? So he's firing these questions to Job. If man in his finiteness, because we are, are finite, God is infinite, but we are finite, if man in his finiteness cannot understand how much God governs the world, how can he expect, expect to comprehend his ways with humans? None of us can understand God fully, completely, totally. The magnificence of creation by his utterance and wisdom can only be entirely his. God has revealed that the universe is a mystery it was not created just for human use, but for the benefit of all life, plant, animal, and human. So neither it nor its creator can be judged solely by human standards. The natural world reveals my order, my justice. Its patterns and meanings are at best just discernible by humanity, but its real secrets are with me with God. Job is overawed at the experience and doesn't know what to say and praise God. But the main thing, the main issue here is that God has appeared to Job and the answer has been given in the interaction. Now his presence helps Job to clarify his own position. Job says he won't speak anymore. This is in chapter 40, verse 4. He has effectively been silenced by God. In the second of God's speeches, which is 40, verses 6 to, 40, to, uh, verses 6 to 41, verse 34. Now, if we think of all these questions that are being asked in Chapter 38, there are actually 39 questions. In chapter 39, verse 1 to 40, verse 2, there are 20 further questions. And then in the second cycle of questions, there are a total of 24 questions from chapter 40, verse 6 to 41 verse 34. So that makes a total of 83 questions in all that Job has been asked. And in chapter 39, or rather chapter 38, sorry, the 39 questions that God asks Job, 
makes it the most chapter with mo makes it the, mo the chapter with the most questions in all of the Bible. The questions, the thirty-nine questions in chapter thirty-eight that God asks Job, is the most questioned in all of the Bible. Now, the second cycle of questions, the second round of uh, God's um, speeches, here he asks Job if he is his equal, that he can call him to a book. And that is chapter 40, verse 8. He challenges Job to don the clothing of a deity, to put on the clothing of, the, of a God and dispense justice, if he can. Can Job indicate himself? That is, can he claim to be Yahweh's equal? If he puts on the clothing of a deity, can he dispense justice as God can? This test of God shows the magnitude of his omniscient wisdom and omnipotence over the universe. God is letting Job know that he, God, cannot be any other way than just. If we look at this from a different perspective, if we look at chapter 40, verses 8 to 14, from another perspective, God is angry at Job's accusa accusations of injustice. How dare he put me in the wrong? This is what God is saying in chapter 40, verse 8. God is attacking Job's arrogance, the thinking he has all the answers. But he's not really being negative and critical of Job, so to speak. He is, in fact, being constructive. He is telling Job to have more dignity, verse 10, chapter 40, to cast off his anger and to detest the proud, verses 11 to 12 that he is to work towards the full destruction of the wicked, verse 13. And what God is doing here, he's inferring that Job is a bit too self-righteous of his past good deeds. He needs to take a good look at himself and must constantly be vigilant as the forces of pride could overtake him. So God is saying you need to watch out. But if you stand strong, I will continue to acknowledge you. And he's saying that in verse 14. Praise God. Praise God. You could also look at it in the, se in the sense that Job has felt that his integrity has been called into question and his right taken away. If you look back into chapter 27, verse 2, he, he feels that his righteousness has been called into question. Working from the assumption of just deserts them, he has tried to ju ju justify himself at God's expense because he feels that he, sh you know, he shouldn't be um, uh, related to him at just deserts because he's a righteous man. God, however, calls into question the legitimacy of Job's premise, of his statement, and he does this in... in um, uh, chapter 40, verse 8. And as chapters 38 to 39 have shown, Job is utterly incapable of exercising moral judgment, let alone control nature of any description. So how can Job govern the world when he cannot be uh, God's equal? Chapter 40, verses 10 to 13. Job should stop from finding fault with God, for failing to govern his world as Job would like, and shouldn't expect God to defer to him. God's justice over the universe forms part of his divine kingship. His authority means having the right to impose his will and all his creatures, but never in a cavalier manner. His authority is an expression of utmost righteousness of a loving father whose beneficial commands in no way should be disobeyed. His kingship also covers ownership and control. 
All things belong to me, Job. The earth, heavens, everything. I have a right to appropriate anything I wish without consulting the owner. This need not be seen as punishment. God is saying to Job here that the loss of his family, his health and his possessions is not punishment, but appropriation. His control means he is master of the universe. God. God's control means he is master of his universe, which he may at times be displeased with. But he's never baffled by it. He's never frustrated by it or threatened by it. And here we have the example of Behemoth and Leviathan. The two beasts illustrated in um, God's second speech. These two monsters are representative of the proud and the wicked elements of the universe. And they're spoken about in chapter 40, verses 15 to chapter 41, verse 34. Both creatures are incredibly fearsome. And as well as being part of God's natural order of creation, also transcends it. Job, in whatever capacity, would not be able to command these monsters. And when he's talking about the behemoth, strong, powerful and fearless, similar to the hippopotamus, muscularly built with a tail as stiff as cedar, bones as hard as bronze and limbs like iron, the strength of this creature means that only myself, only Yahweh, only God, only I can crush it and harness its power. Likewise, the description of the beast Leviathan seems to fit that of the crocodile, which is just as powerful and dangerous. With its impenetrable face and skin, fearsome teeth and highly co tightly coiled shielded back, it too can only be vanquished by me, God. The strength and sheer and tameability of these beasts tells of my sovereign power over my creation. The, audos the audacity, Job, of you to question my judgment of kingly rule can only be described as complete folly. So the Lord has spoken to Job and um, he's not very happy with certain things and he's, you know, he's coming and says, you know, Job, did you, you know, where were you when I did this? Where were you when I made the animals? Where were you, etc. And he just, you know, throws all these questions at him. And the extent of, of God's court discourses show that Job overstepped the mark and went too far with his protestations. He should have relied on his own understanding. He should not rather have relied on his own understanding and accused God of injustice. He has no answer to give except to that of being an unworthy and vile insignificance. And he's, he's, you know, he says this in um, chapter 40, verses 3 to 5. Notice that God has said nothing about Job's suffering. And neither does he receive a bill of indictment or a verdict of innocence. More importantly, however, God does not humiliate or condemn him. It may look at his, as if he's oh. criticizing him, but he's giving him a good piece of advice not to be too self-righteous because, you know, of all the good works that he has done and how he has lived. So the fact that God does not humiliate him, so to speak, or condemn him, by implication, then, Job is vindicated. At this point, Job has been well and truly put in his place. His boldness and self-confidence has dissipated, has diminished. He has presumed to know too much and was conceited in his righteousness. He has been silenced and humbled. He admits that he now has, has no reason to continue his quest for justice. He is repentant, saying, surely I spoke of things I did not understand. He now knows that he didn't have all the answers, though he thought he had. In fact, he was not asking the right questions. He had not appreciated the full might of God or his wonder of his actions in the universe, of his universal governance. 
God shows him that his justice, God's justice, is of a different dimension altogether and cannot be compared to that, the human justice. You know, we need to think of God is eternal. He's in the spiritual, but he can come into the natural, whereas we're in the natural all the time. And we're trying to understand him in the natural. And we have to go into the spiritual <clears throat> at times to understand what is what it is he wants and what it is he's saying to us. Praise God. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Take oh. some water, sis. Yeah, I think. Uh, what? Yeah, I'm sort of. You know, when you're stuck. talking quite a bit, sometimes it can make the throat get dry. That's yeah. why you need some liquid. I'm tripping, I'm tripping oh. over my words. <laughs> oh, no. mm-hmm. happened. Sometimes happened to me many times. Yes, yeah, mm. it can happen. Mm-hmm. My words. Mm-hmm. Want to come out and can't come out. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. God is saying, "Who is this that obscure my counsel without knowledge?" And Job's response is highlighted his lack of understanding <clears throat> because he could not fathom the ways of, of God. Praise God. <clears throat> However, Job does not confess that he sinned, but only that he made confident declarations outside his range of actual knowledge. So it's sort of fudge the issue there a bit. I thought I was doing the right thing. Praise God. <clears throat> in in uh, verse 4, Job cites... Um, Uh, God's words of questioning to him when he says, listen now, and I will speak, I will question you, and you shall answer me. And his reply reflects the fulfillment of his desire to see um, God, as we saw in chapter 19, verse 26 to 27. He now acknowledges that his previous knowledge derived from the traditional wisdom of the culture that he lived in was incomplete. Moreover, his previous understanding, or moreover, sorry, his new understanding of God has magnified significantly his perception of the issues at hand. And though he is still not quite aware of the full picture of everything involved in his misfortune, Job has come to a more accurate understanding of who God is. He also recognizes to a greater degree than before the dimension of God's wisdom and power exercised in his governance of the world. So he's just had a little a glimpse of the immensity of God, of his majesty, of his sovereignty, of his power. You know, I think he was trying to, he was trying to put God in the same um, sphere as himself. And, you know, you can't do that. You know, you cannot you know, have a, 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 um, a, a consultation or any type of um, intimacy with God on that, you know, on that score. You, you're not, you're not equal. You're just not equal. So you can't see God as you <laughs> Praise God. So Job um, has changed his mind uh, at this more intimate experience with Yahweh, with God. God has come out of the world with Job has experienced a profound transformation in light of which any internal issues of guilt, justice and injustice charges and counter charges have subsequently vanished. He concludes his responses to Yahweh when he says in chapter 42 verse 6, Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And here again, if we look at the word repent, it doesn't mean uh, the sin that his friends are talking about, you know, that he should repent because, you know, he's, he's uh, got a personal sin that is, is grossly uh, violated God and that's why he is as he is. In this instant, the word repent means to change his mind, to change one's mind. About, uh, it's what it, it, it's the word repent here means. He's uh, changed his mind about his understanding and about you know who God is about his universal governance of the word 
that he, you know, he didn't really understand and he spoke no, to about it. He made confident declarations outside yeah. of any actual knowledge about the, you know, the sovereignty and the magnificence of, you know, uh, a supreme and eternal God. And that is to say that um, he's sorry for what he, he um, He's sorry to approach God in that manner. Yeah, he's, you know, he's saying, yeah, he didn't understand the, you yeah. know, he, he's, um, he's sorry. He did it in a foolish way. Yes, yes, you know, and God is saying, you know, I can do whatever I want. I can, I can take your life, I can take your kids, I can take whatever, you know, and it's called appropriation. Everything belongs to me, so I can do whatever I want with whatever I've created. He's the one who have the control over, over us. So it could be also be the case that um, Job's repenting in dust and ashes, so to speak, be an indication of his humil humility, you know, as a mere human, which he is be a human being before a transcendent God, you know. Um, Job acknowledges, now acknowledges his creaturely condition he realizes his ignorance and incomprehensibility of um, God's divine, excuse me, God's divine sovereignty, because he now understands, realizes rather, how little he understands compared to God's omniscience. Job retract, retracts his, his insistence that God answer him. All of these um, uh, protestations he's been throwing out. You know, is writ demanding is writ of, writ of particulars. Wanted to know why this has happened to him. You know, writing out a, a, a notice of, of uh, litigation for for God. You know, it's just completely um, out of the out of the out of the window now. Completely out of the window, he retracts everything that he's you know he said about God. The friends too are also rebuked by God because they mm. have not spoken of me what is right, he says, as my servant. Mm. Chapter 42, verse 7. Mm. By insisting that God only worked on the predictability of retribution, they were basically mm. engaged in trying to protect mm. God's reputation at the cost mm. of diminishing his immeasurable mm. wisdom and sovereign control. Mm. So even they themselves were doing it, you know, that they were doing God a service, you know. They lived in a culture where just desserts was the norm and they felt they were protecting God's reputation by saying what they did to Job. They did that not understand. Is that is they, um, Sister Renee, I don't ask more questions. It's, um, I'm just uh, sorry to um to butt in, but uh, Job um Job friends that came to um, to look for a job and then they um they think evil up against Job as if um it was sin Job yeah. sin because Eliphaz was the he was the he was the head one he was the leader. He was the oldest. Eliphaz was the oldest. So the oldest always goes first. Seniority takes. Yeah, he was, yes, he's the oldest one, so he was the leader of the other two. Not necessarily, just his age. I suppose you could say that. But, you know, in the culture, in some cultures, if, if you're senior, you always go first, even though you may not know much. You have to go first because of your age. You know, someone who's behind you is a bit more mature, if you like, may know more. But because you're older, you go first. So it's a culture of the times that we were living in. Yeah, because um, he was the eldest one, so he was the leader for the other two. So, yeah, he was saying, so, elephant, so... So, uh, what do you mean? They were, so, they were, it was a question. They were, re they were rebuked. They were rebuked. They were rebuked by the Lord. Yeah, they were rebuked because it said they, they didn't speak correctly. Yeah. As Job said, Job knew there was something not quite right mm. with their 
what they were saying. You know, they stuck rigidly to the retribution formula. And Job was saying, no, this is not right. Job was right in that it was not correct. But then, you know, he sort of overstepped the mark in blaming God for what happened to him and accusing God of injustice. See, and that's where he went wrong because he, he put himself, he, his, he put his integrity, he says, you know, my integrity, my righteousness is at stake here. And he was looking at himself more than he was looking at God, you know, and the meaning of who God is. And declaring that God was unjust was, you know, a, a quite, a, you could say, well, I mean, that is a sin in a way, saying that God is unjust, you know. Mm -hmm. So he was um, putting himself in a place of righteousness, if you like, before God, because he was saying God is unjust, you know, and God was saying, who is it, you know, that calls me to account when I created the world, when I, you know, um, feed the animals, I... Um, create them, I give this to them, I provide for them in every way possible. Could you do this too? Could you do all of these things that I do? You know, do you know when, you know, the, 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 um, the deers, you know, do you know when they, they, you know, they have their young, do you know how they're fed? Do you know, can you separate light from darkness? Have you been to the underworld? Do you know anything? And Job realizes that, you know, he didn't know anything at all. You know, he couldn't answer one single question. Praise God. Praise God. I lost my train of thought now. So, um, Job is told that, yes, okay, he was right to answer, he was right to question events. And it suggests that this, this is acceptable to, to God. It is right to ask, to ask questions. <coughs> and if you look in the, in the Bible, there are many instances where, you know, um, people ask questions. David asked questions. You know, the prophets, they ask questions of God. And we too in our prayers, we ask questions yeah. of God. And when we don't get answers, we want to know why. So, you know, in a way. We, you know, all of us are a little bit like Job, I suppose. Mm. You know? Yes. <laughs> As I asked Christian but many times, even life. today, even more over today time. I was asking Christian. Yeah. So, um, moreover, all this now, all this situation of Job now, moreover, it has increased his profile his suffering in fact has increased his profile he has grown as a person definitely while his friends remain in the same position really job has seen god he's heard what he's had to say he realizes that he bit enough more than he could chew god has put him straight and, you know, God has uh, rebuked his friends because the, the way they were talking about Job was patently unhelpful and not right. And they still believed in the just deserts when they saw what was happening to Job. They didn't think to think that something else might be in the mix. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Amen. And what, uh, what Job has learned is that the divinely ordered justice in the world is God's governance. Litigation is our system of justice, is man's system of justice. God is a divine being and his sense of governance is completely different to ours. It cannot be the same thing. He is not bound in any form. He is eternal. And he has illustrated through his presentation of animate and inanimate objects, phenomena, his greatness, his omnipotence, his power. Job conse so, uh, consequently speaks at the end of all these questions, not as an innocent man who rejects the divine judge, or improperly accusing him of wrongdoing, 
but he's now an enlightened man who accepts an all-powerful king. His acceptance is based on a full understanding that divine justice integrates the ideas of human jurisprudence and divine sovereignty. God must not be simply viewed as a judge, but also has to be seen as a sovereign king. Divine justice, for this reason, cannot be acknowledged apart from divine sovereignty. The book of Job tells us that life's perplexities cannot be resolved from a human perspective alone. One has to focus on the mystery of God's transcendent power and wisdom. And one author has said, and I quote, Man can trust God even when explanations are missing. Man must live with mystery. He must recognize that his questions may remain unanswered. That God may choose to respond in, uh, in silence to his inquiries about the reason for undeserved suffering. That God may remain silent to his probings about the problems of unmerited tragedy. The Christian must learn to remain content with problems he cannot understand, realizing that man's finitude keeps him from having eternity's perspective, which only God possesses. Like Job, we can learn that God's silence does not mean his absence. Amen. After all his pain and suffering, Job is restored to a place of abundance. God is bountiful in his blessings upon his perfect servant. The blessings demonstrate that God is a life-giving God and not an unreliable and capricious God who takes pleasure in patronage and the suffering of those who fear him. In the design of God, he may permit suffering for a season, but in due time there will be total healing. Furthermore, God's doubling denotes full acceptance of Job. We can assume that Job is now physically healed, his body cleared of every defect, painful or otherwise. He has been restored in the eyes of the community and his family who had so callously rejected him in his suffering, which we saw in chapter 19, verses 18, 18 to 19, now queue up to welcome him back, bearing expensive gifts. Job did not ask for an explanation so much as for vindication, which God graciously gave him in abundance. El Shaddai, the God of his sufferings, is the same as God as Yahweh, his God of grace. Neither had abandoned him. He can rest assured as he continues his walk of faith that neither will ever desert him. I'll leave it there. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I'll leave it there. So, um, I've more or less, um, finished i more or less finished it now and um, i'll just do a conclusion next week and that'll be the end of joe praise so god we finish, so do you want to finish with job tonight i finished i finished next week i'll do the con i'll do a conclusion, the conclusion. i'll just round up next week and that's it finished we finished yeah when they do wrong can Job, Job question, question God, and God will rebuke him. So, we are Christian, we will look at time. God, a lot of time we fall. Yeah. One thing we start before. So, Jesus will rebuke us some, sometime when we're wrong. And we are most of the work with the Lord, and we are, and Job never seen. But his, his step was the mark. Mm. He, was, he, was, he was rebuked by God. So, he has construction rebuke. Yes. Yeah. We are not. Per we are not. We are in this world. This body subject to make mistake. And no man in this world. Everyone was made mistake. Don't okay, care who they are. We do make mistake. Yeah. And we need to rebuke sometimes. Right. The righteous man need to rebuke because we are still. We are still here in this this world. And the only time we have to be 
all this was perfect. So we get to heaven. When they say, I believe that, the only time we're going to be, um, what should I say you now? Uh, perfect is when they go to heaven. No man see and heard who is righteous, 100% righteous before God. I believe, that's my belief. Maybe you believe something different, but I believe that. And why we also sometimes think you stand, you fall. Sometimes you think you stand, you fall. Okay. So, I enjoy it so much. So, Job stepped over the mark. Well, question. And the woman came to me. I, I said, I said, Job, take God to court. But Job, Job lose the case. Because when God asked him, where were you? When I put the star in place, where were you? He asked him, <laughs> oh, question, he asked him. Yeah. She said, well, he asked him. He asked him a, to, a total of eighty-three questions because there were thirty-nine questions in chapter thirty-eight, twenty questions in thirty-nine uh, to forty uh, verse two. So it's a total of fifty-nine, and then there was another twenty-four questions in chapter forty to forty-one. Oh, it's quite, what did he answer them? Sorry. The first question. The first question. one question. He couldn't answer one question. Not one. Sorry? In chapter 38, he didn't answer any question. He answered no questions. He couldn't answer any question that God asked him. And 39. He didn't, one, one, he didn't answer one question. Not one. Not one. And how many questions did um God ask Job? Uh, yes, he asked him a total of 83. 83, 83 questions. 83. You can count them. You can count them in chapter 30. Where are, where are we? 38. There are 39 questions. You can count them. You can count them at 20 in 39, verse 1 to 40, verse 2. And in uh, the second uh, cycle, 24 questions in chapter 40 to 41, 34. And he couldn't answer one question. Mm. Because he is, you know, what says, where were you? Where were you? He couldn't answer no question. He couldn't, win. he couldn't win the case. He couldn't win God. No. That's right. That's right. He could never. You know? And that's so, so Job acted foolishly. Yeah, that's correct. He acted foolishly. Yeah. But holy. And so sometimes, and so sometimes we acted foolishly too yeah. in our Christian journey. You know. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Oh. Yeah, we are still in this world. Yeah. Yes. We are not wish you in here. But um, it's good when we are when we acted foolishly and we acknowledge our wrongs and repent and yes. you know and yes. try to move forward. You know, acknowledge when you are wrong. Mm. Because some of us um, when we are wrong, we don't want to acknowledge it. I try yes. that we are wrong because we feel as if we are too big and yeah. you know we are too proud to say right. sorry or to. Yeah. Repent of what we have done, you know, but mm -hmm. you know, we are all little children any at all you are You are a uh, believer in God. We are little mm -hmm. children Yeah, uh, the Bible just you have to become as a little child to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have to humble Yes And I'm a, I'm a type of person if I'm wrong as a I'm sorry Yeah, right. me too pastor. That's me. Yeah, Mr. Sarah about that. I know it. And I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to, I didn't intend to yeah. hurt, but you feel, you know, but sorry about it. And some people don't want to forgive you when it's a sorry. No, some don't <laughs> forgive <laughs> you. No, it's true, you know, but they yeah. haven't got forgiveness then, isn't it? They don't yeah. have to give, we have to some also be sorry. Some people don't have to forgive you. And we should admit when we're sorry, we should be humble enough. Yeah. And not be, you know, <laughs> too proud. So there's three things. You know, there should be forgiveness. Someone said they're sorry, you have to accept it. 
Yeah, she was so At least you're being the judge. You're being the judge and the jury then. Yeah. And some seminar says, sorry, sorry for what? <laughs> I, I know that uh, I, uh, it was about uh, three months ago, two mm. sisters um, um, missed the arm um, road to another sister and, you know, treat her very bad and she was very ashamed. And mm. I said, to, I said to this, so she was complaining to me and I said, oh my God, I always have to do just say sorry. She says, oh, she now says sorry. I should never say sorry to her. Wow. That's so pride. I just told the kids. Never say that sorry is to pride. Her. And she really, she really shame her body you know, before oh, wow. you know, before someone else. Oh, and it was not two of them alone, you know, and she feel very bad. Pride Some isn't. Time, one word. Tell me sometimes that's what I could like to say something. Sometimes one word. Just throw the kiss. Sorry. Ah, oh, wow. uh, okay. And done. Okay, I'm very sorry. Two words. Okay, yeah. sorry. And it goes kiss. And some people keep going on and on and on. Please, please forgive me. Please forgive me. <laughs> yeah. Some people, them not, them not forgive you. I mean, I think so. Them forgive you. Them bring up, them bring it up back again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, is that right? Did yeah. you know that she was wrong? Yes, he did. What did he said that repenting just in ashes. He said, yeah, he says he was... Um, of course, Joe, about to repent. Confident. He says he made confident declarations mm -hmm. without knowing the true picture. So okay. he did, yeah. yeah. That's good. That's probably all made mistake because David said in his case, all men are liars. Mm -hmm. you know? In his case, he said that. We all, we all, we all, sometimes we find ourselves short, you know, because Pastor, like I can say, um, we are not perfect. Yeah. And uh, Solomon said, there is not a man on the face of the earth that do not sin. We all sin. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You must, know when, you must know when you find yourself sin. You must know when you must know when you are in the wrong. That's right. Because you have a conscience. And the Holy Spirit will tell you when you are wrong, any at all. Yeah. And, and sometimes somebody can upset you the word in And get that, that upset, kick out home with you. And mm. you are thinking what somebody said to you. Yeah, and you answer them. Because what I'm most only one is to have it with you. But what I'm only one is to leave it by on the road. And step in our house. And that new ads, you are different ads, you are forget it. And then mm. you don't care about it with your back. Wait, mm -hmm. wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. 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 Wait, I think for the person problem put on you. Yeah. <laughs> so that yeah. person is punishing the other person. I don't know. Get down to me, John. Get down to me. Yeah. Get down to me. It can happen, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Sure. It can happen. Somebody upset you. You don't want anybody to talk to you. So when yeah. you're talking to your job, you answer me yeah. now. Yeah. You're from one thing. Oh, why do you want someone? Why she answer me? So. But sometimes really it's not you that you know they don't angry you but because of me. It's a human. Because it's me is the one. But because of me, me make them angry now. <laughs> it's human nature. Oh the mercy. It's a new it's a human nature. You want it? Mr. Tamar, Sam clean. Cry now, my kiss but me some tap the tongue. Race and now see me tap sir. Okay, blessings everyone, blessings everyone. Very interest, interesting um, story, um, illustration of Job. It's a story we all know well, and we all know basically how, how you know, the relationship that God had with Job and what ha transpired with Job. Um, but, you know, sometimes we don't go through the details as um, Sister Vern has been through these details of the little nitty-gritty and things like that. 
but we on a whole we uh, we know the story but you know it's been it's interesting when we think about it you know um how um we we sometimes even we sometimes when we find ourselves in a very tight situation sometimes we're wondering you know why god allowed this to happen to me you know and um i suppose it's a human nature we we tend to question question why why me you know you know sometimes we do the best we can and yet we find ourselves being persecuted we find ourselves in some tight situation we don't understand but you know um sometimes we have to take a step back and you know see yeah, yeah. you know oh. just see that um there's a big god up there and um we are human but we tend to feel that we can do things by because we have a nature you know we are in the image of god so we have this our kind of nature of the i i the, we have the i in us which represent yeah. in power so we think sometimes that we can do anything and we can get away with anything and nothing is supposed to happen to us but you know but uh, quite good true true the whole the story Evap, you know, explain um, my sister Vern and the small details of, you know, the question that God asked Job. And then oh. Job came to realize that, well, I'm not really what I think I am. You know, um, I'm just, maybe just look, when God spoke to him and he looks inside himself, maybe he just saw himself like an ant. Very small, you know, very small kind of comparison, and yet he was challenging God, you know. Yes, so yes. It, it makes you wonder sometimes we ourselves sometimes question God, and and God understands, you know. Um, but the good thing about it, Job did not curse God, no, even he cursed the day he was born. He said, you know, curse the day when I was born, you know, but he didn't curse God, and so he, despite his grief. God understood his grief and you know his um complaint but it's a very good story and um just to say that um I think humility is a great thing and for us to acknowledge when we have done something wrong it's not everybody can do that and um I always think about David David God loved David because David sinned against God and when the prophet told him he was quick he was quick to say, Lord, have mercy upon me. And that's the attitude that we should have. And then God, that's the attitude that is pleasing before God. So may we remember that we are but dust. <laughs> Sometimes we tend to forget. But the fact is, we are but dust. Made in the image of God, but we are but dust. Yes. And our knowledge is very <laughs> finite. Our knowledge... And no matter how much we know, our knowledge of is very finite. God's knowledge is eternal, endless. You know, so we can't compare ourselves to God, and we cannot challenge God. But that's that's what you know. Uh, God bless you, Sister Vern. Is is um really wonderful the way you brought this um story of Job out. Thank you, Arthur left a, quite a bit of it out but I just didn't want to go on and on and on about it but um, I'll just conclude I'll just sum up next week and um, you know just briefly just just go over the other bits you know just the closure just to, to round off mm -hmm. and then as I say take a leaf out of Job's book yeah. the words of Sister, Sister Vern will be ended Mm. You know, <laughs> Job said in thirty one, the words of Job are ended. So uh, next week I will say the words of Sister Sister Vern about the book of Job are ended. Praise God. Well, maybe we go into another chapter then. Have, uh, have some. <laughs> maybe there'll be another chapter. Uh, Someone, someone else, it's someone uh, else's turn. Another book to step up and another trade. book. Mm. We've done yeah. with the Job book of Job, so maybe we need to go to another book. Yeah, all right, come on.
Yeah, but well, well, leave that one leave one that one. to Pastor Winston and um, yes, sis. um which book of things you going to? I have no idea, yeah. sir. As as the Lord lead you, sir. As the Lord lead you. <laughs> Let the Lord lead you. Yeah, Maclean, what book of things you going to? I don't know, Pastor. Tell I don't know. I mean, I'm just going to wonder. I'm not going to wonder. I'm not going to wonder. I'm not going to wonder. It's only the Holy Spirit can reveal that we cannot do it up for ourselves. Yeah, I'm going to come to me. But I don't want to hear your view. Something came to me. Well, I mean, well, if Sister Vern is going to... If Sister Vern is going to be teaching, then let she decide what she wants to move on to next, then uh, out of the new pastor, Winston. Is, is, is she, is she going to continue, is she going to continue teaching and teaching this, these topics? No, that was just a one-off. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I'll talk to you when you come up with that. Yeah. I'll tell how we'll do that when they when they come off the platform. Amen. So it's just on the Bible studies, not prayer meeting, not um not prayer meeting. Yeah, I'm saying it was just the one off. It was just the Okay. It's okay. not a regular thing. It's I'll just one off prayer meeting, you know. I've got this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, That's all. Maybe, maybe, maybe by meeting then. Uh, I'll leave that up to her. Uh, it's up, it's up to Let's pass Winston oh, decide. Oh, there are a lot of things need to be prayed for. Yeah, prayer is good. Prayer is good. Pray, okay. Prayer is the key. Okay. We should. Uh, uh, pray about it. When, when it yeah, comes. yeah, yeah. I'll let you guys know. We discussed that. I'll let you guys know. No. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I said, Job, Job have to repent. That's how I say, did Job repent? And he okay. said, yeah. Then we have to repent of that. Right now, we are going to repent before God. We're going to close the repentance prayer. Yeah. But we are praying that God to forgive us. That's so right. That's right. That's right. And then we are. And what witness is. That's right. Job, repent. So we too need to repent. That's right. God. Yeah. Mm. So we're going to share our frame and then we are going to go along in prayer and we pray to God. Yes. And then we yeah. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. Oh. Sister Rosie. I surrender all. I surrender. I surrender all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender. Surrender in the Bible. I'm a stranger, you know. Jonah surrender in the whale's belly. Yeah, 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 yes, yes. And um, Peter surrender. Mm. Uh, where surrender? Um, they the all deny Christ. They all surrendered. They all surrendered. All the patriots and prophets yeah. surrendered sometime or another. They had to surrender. Every one of them. Yes. Isaiah surrender, Isaiah said, I'm undone. Yes, yes I am undone. Yes. Um, in the way of the belly. Yes, Jonah. I surrender. 
They all so surrender I, sometime or another. Yes, yes, yes. So we know God the much for God the God the God for God can't forgive us when we sin. Yes. We sin. You know, our, our answer to somebody. Our, our way we answer somebody. Answer somebody in our answer. Pass them again. Um, Yes, yes, sir. We just want to say one thing. Um, you see, God is so, God is so big. He, mm -hmm. he, he, his size is so immense, and yet He is so small. He makes Himself so small. God don't ask us to do nothing that He Himself don't do. He, mm -hmm. You realize that? He, he, he don't ask us to do nothing that He Himself don't do. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible tells us that God himself will repent. He will repent that he made man. The Bible tells us that. So for us to repent, it shouldn't be a hard thing. Because if God Almighty can repent, how much more we, being just mere dust, Something we need to just consider, you know. And God repent more than once in the Bible. If we look at the Bible, God repent more than once. Uh, and some, and we can't repent. <laughs> Something wrong somewhere. Thank you. <laughs> Can you explain it a bit more, please, when you say we can't repent? In what sense of us repenting? No, you mean like if we do sin? No, I mean, or we I, I don't mean, I mean, man. Action as well. Yeah, I mean, man in general. Man, I, man. You're wrong with someone. You're wrong with uh, someone. Yeah, yeah, I mean, man in general. You hurt someone. You hurt yeah. someone. Yeah. And you know they are hurt by you. You know that you hurt them and they are hurt yeah. by you. Yeah, and you just keep in pride and. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. You're, you're just not prepared. Yeah, you don't hear. Yeah, you don't hear. Yeah, hurt other people's feelings. Mm, gosh. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you need to. If someone's like that, they need to really go down on their knees and ask God to, you know, mm. help them with that stone heart because it's horrible to feel like that. If you're a Christian, your heart should feel that, you know, yeah, that sorrow. Wow. Yeah. So when I was saying, man, when I said we, yeah. yeah. So when I said we we don't repent, I was just generalizing, generalizing okay, that the yeah. massive people will not repent. People yeah. will not repent and come to God. But if okay. God Himself can repent, and the whole world, mm. they can't repent. So that's what I mean. Yeah, but that's giving their lives to the Lord, isn't it? Yes, it the is. Whole world, it that is. Means they have to be like a normal person in the street who's not even saved to give their life to the Lord. Some yes. of them are just so lost that the, the way they've been brought up, maybe, that they've never really even thought of God, and especially if they've got things going for them. You know, sometimes we find God in our brokenness, in our times when we're broken. Even someone in the world, they could be so broken, they could have lost everything, and then they just decide, oh, let me see who this Jesus is. Uh, in John, 1 John 1 verse 9, he said, if we confess our sin, he will be faithful and just and will forgive us our sin and our iniquity. Yes. He will confess our sin in favor and just to forgive us. So we will confess. Tell me you're sorry. And we have to confess and two at a time. Tell me you say sorry. Yes. Please don't mention it. You're not only going to confess too. Can I confess to you? I have to confess to Sister Kelsey. Sister Kelsey has to confess. Me too, because we are made mistake. That's we right. Are we are we confess mm -hmm. what's to God. He is faithful and yes. just to what he was of our righteousness. God mm. is faithful God. Yes. And yeah. so God, that God, so God, that God forgive us. I wonder what they have done to Thank you, Jesus. True. Put in his faith, they box him, <coughs> beat him, and he forgive the whole world. Because we all those who punish him, then to the cross, kill him, he yeah, kill him, he yeah, kill him, and he died for you and for me. And he said, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they have done. Amen. They're foolish, they don't know what they have done. Mm. 
And so glad, so glad God is like that. Jesus said that to work in mind of this. Yeah. Yeah. And so glad he, he will give me one day. I will live well. I will yeah. see the I will say I'm Sunday. She was smoking. And she was in the world. And she I didn't know that you were smoking. You don't look yeah. like like a smoker. It's like you can't, you know, when you're in the world, you're in the world, so, yeah. That's when I was a teenager. Yes, I smoked that cigarette, what I called the fag back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. Thank God, thank God. Thank God. Faithful and just to work it was a fall and righteousness. What a God. He's great. I am. He's great. He's so good. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, um, so merciful. We're going to um, close our repentance prayer now. And we are going to pray together. Amen. Uh, yes. Amen. We're going to pray. God of my, and in um, June, um, Jeremiah 3 31, where we are to the poor, for I will forgive their uh, weaknesses. And will remember what they have seen no more. I will, I will forgive their witnesses. Cause we are the witnesses. I, I, I remember their sin no more. Amen. They can forgive our witnesses. Yes. You know your witnesses. I know our witnesses. The market know our witnesses. Tell me the country. Tell me we all know our witnesses. Yeah. But God is faithful for the world. Yes. For what we now we are weak in turn here. Yeah. Mm. Remember where you, 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 put, you, you put your face, when we are look, you put our people, put them on their clothes here, in turn way. Sometimes we have to look pleasant, look jolly, and look approachable. When somebody see they want to come, come forward to you to have communicate, how are they? Now when you go to church, you have to, you have to, you have, you have to entice people. He wants to look, that will be just come. Then get that. Oh my God. Pastor, why? she's so pleasant. She's so meek. She's so, she's so unique. Ah, she yeah, is a possible. Ah, I want to go back to Bible Church. I want to go back to Mr. Temple platform, and his platform. We welcome people nice and which is really in love. And the greatest commandment is love. Yeah. So we have to think about this thing. Love people. Care for people. That's right. Love people. Hallelujah! And pray for people. And I'll play that attitude, I'll play that baby, I'll play that smile. Yeah, and God, where I want. For He will forgive our witness. I will say witness. That witness is a different way. So we're going to pray tonight that God will join us as we continue this journey. So they are that time. It is all that time. Because they are there. I went and look at the example. We're going to pray. I'll give you an example. I went to the thing and I was talking to one guy. I was doing something, something. I have vegetable burger. And this guy come from nowhere. Yeah. Four pound fifty. I said, mm -hmm. why you have to say like that? You didn't have to have four fifty. I said, I said, you don't talk to me like that. Oh. Then, then the guy said, he's he, he, he the boss. He's he the boss. I know to, know, to, know, know to talk to people. No, no, to. He mm. said, you know what I'm saying? He's only called 4.50. Yeah, yeah. So I said, I'm mm because -hmm. I look, I'm a black guy. That's why I must talk like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. But I'm the man who put me on here. I will never go out there. That's right. Yeah. I'm not the one to why. But they want to watch yeah. people turn their shop. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. They don't have to deal with people. The attitude. Bad attitude. The bad attitude. Let us pray now. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we praise your name. We lift you up. We glorify you. We magnify you. Your holy name, dear Lord. We thank you, Lord encouraging message today about thank you for your word lord hallelujah telling us about job lord help us lord jesus that we will also acknowledge our greatness how great you are how mighty you are how powerful you are dear lord 
Help us to see that you are beyond reproach. My God, we thank you for your love towards us. We thank you for your blessings towards us. We thank you for your goodness towards us. Lord, we pray you will bless everyone that is on this platform. I pray your hand will be upon every one of your children. I pray that you will bless Pastor Mac. Hallelujah. Lord God, bless Pastor Magan. Mr. Magan, bless Mr. Rose, Mr. Um, Vern. Of mercy, Lord, bless us, oh God. Direct us, Lord Jesus. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my transgression. Forgive me of my unrighteousness. Lord, I repent before you, Lord. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Sanctify, sanctify us, Lord. Lord, purchase with his self, purchase with his self, and I shall be clean. Watch me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord, cleanse me, Lord, from unrighteousness. Cleanse me from all sin. Lord Jesus, wash me without and within. In the name of Jesus, have mercy, Lord. I call to your loving kindness. I call to your tender mercy, Lord. Have mercy upon us, Lord Jesus. Condemn not the soul for the sin of the flesh. But help me, Lord Jesus, to be sanctified. Help me to be sanctified before you, Lord Jesus. Lord, bless everyone that is here, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord. Wash us, Lord. Purge us, Lord Jesus. Give us the victory, Lord Jesus. Cleanse us, Lord, from all unrighteousness. Our God, wash us and cleanse us. Purify the hearts of our hearts, O God, that our heart may be pure before you. Okay. We praise you, we worship you, we glorify you. We magnify your name. Thank you for your blessing, us. Thank you for your loving kindness. Sanctify us, O God. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We worship you, glorify you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your goodness. Be merciful unto us. Thank you, O God. Be with, be with us, Lord Jesus. Oh God, wash us thoroughly, wash us and cleanse us, make us whole. Lord have mercy, give us the victory, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And everyone is that we duty bound to pray for, Lord Jesus. Have mercy, bless Sister Vernon, bless Pastor McGann, bless and bless Sister Rose, Sister Monisha, Sister McGann, Sister Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Bless us, Lord, bless us, Jesus. Keep us, Lord Jesus. Those ex Hallelujah, and all the members of the church, we pray for them, Lord. We pray that we bless them, Lord. Jesus, we give you glory. Touch us and clean as well, Lord. Bless the Lord. Touch our Lord Jesus. Have mercy upon us. Forgive us and sanctify us, Lord. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. And mercy, we pray. We ask his blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. You alone are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this night. Thank oh, you. thank you, Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want 